Welcome to Charged Up Studio Live, where small business owners get charged up for success. Are you a small business owner? Do you find yourself struggling through the many responsibilities that come with the title entrepreneur? Well, we're here for you. Charged Up Studio is hosted by Market Academy LLC, your prescription for what we call OPA. What is OPA? It's when you become so overwhelmed with the confusion that comes with business ownership that you become paralyzed and ultimately avoid doing anything in hopes it will take care of itself or you put it off till later. Does that sound familiar? I'm your host, Dan Olivo, and each week we bring a business professional eager to charge you up as they talk about the many things that keep you from moving forward with your small business. So are you ready to get charged up for success? Let's hit it. So good morning, Charged Up Studio listeners, and welcome back to another episode of Charged Up Studio, the podcast. I'm Dana Olivo, your host and CEO of Market Academy LLC. And today we have a very special guest who is an example of how passion and purpose can break through any debilitating blocks, whether physical or mental, to reach your ultimate life goals. Reading her bio and how she has overcome so many challenges on both fronts is a true testament to the term mind over matter. So please welcome to Charged Up Studio, Miss Amberly Lago. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much. I am so glad you have joined us today. And and like we were talking beforehand, you know, I read through your bio, you know, and everything. And oh my gosh, you know, our our lives have just almost mirrored in in overcoming these challenges. So let's just talk a little bit about um, where you are coming from. What is it that you do and where that passion comes from? Well, again, thank you. I'm honored to be here. And I really, my intention is to share some tips and tools on how others can tap into their resilience and um, really use their passion and purpose to go after their big dreams and goals. And, and my life is totally different now than it was 13 years ago, 13 years ago, my whole life changed. I was in the fitness industry for 26 years and loved it, but it was a very, it was very comfortable for me. I had pretty the same kind of set hours and I got to teach other trainers how to get certified and become trainers and run a fitness business as well. And I employed several people and in the blink of an eye, everything changed when I got hit by an SUV while riding my motorcycle. And it really, um, through months in the hospital, um, 34 surgeries to save my leg from amputation. You know, they had to put my femoral artery back together um, piece by piece, put me back together. And, um, I went down a dark path, but I think because I have a passion to connect with others and give them hope and inspiration, I completely reinvented, um, myself and what I do. And so I wrote a book called true grit and grace, and it's really a call to your resilience. And now I coach female entrepreneurs in a mastermind and how to really expand their influence impact so they can make a bigger income Um, because we all have a story, you know, and we all have experiences and things that we have learned along the way that can help other people. And so I'm most passionate about connecting with others, whether it's speaking on stages or through my podcast or through my mastermind. So that's a little bit about what, what I do and kind of where I came from from. And I'll tell you, six years ago, I didn't even own a computer. And so I didn't know what Zoom was. I didn't have social media. I think I had started a Facebook page just to kind of uh, keep keep in touch with family and friends. And so once I decided 
to write a book and share a message of hope and inspiration. Um, I was like, well, I got to figure out this social media. So and figure out a computer. I am telling you, I didn't even know how to attach a picture to an email. That's how little I knew about computers and technology and all of it. And so I share that because, you know, we can start with nothing and build something and have the life that we've always imagined, even when things don't go as planned. And so I share that um, to anyone listening who's like, you know, wants to try something new and they think they might be too old or too young or not smart enough or have all the credentials. Cause I definitely felt like I wasn't smart enough and didn't know enough and maybe was too old, but if I can do it, anybody can do it. Well, you know, it's, it's, it's so impressive to hear this because of the fact that, you know, we know, and I know, you know, and I know, you know, so many not just women, but men out there as well, who struggle with those insecurities, and we call them insecurities, but what they're they're actually what they actually are is our inner voices, and there are there are inner voices that are um, telling us we can't do it, we can't do it, and you know I I can tell you that for the longest time I believed I could do it. But you get to a point where you have to cross over and accept the rewards for what you've done. That's where we end up getting caught, you know, because I knew that once I stepped over that point, I'd have to show and accept the fact that, look, or not accept the fact, but take the chance of somebody calling me a fraud or something to that effect. And when you talk about how you went through your um debilitating accident, which is basically what it was. What is it that really you dug deep? What was it that helped you through that? Was it faith? Was it, you know, what was it that helped you through those difficult, dark times? Well, it was, as you can see, um, grit and grace all over my wall and my book and my podcast is called grit and grace. And it was definitely, grit and resilience that I had developed through a lifetime of struggles. And it was by the grace of God. Um, And it was by working on my mindset through the years. I think that growing up being an athlete and a dancer and having great mentors and a coach and a dance instructor that used to just, I always thought, man, why is she the hardest on me? And I didn't realize at the time why, you know, I would do three pirouettes and she'd say, well, but you could always do four. I'd be running on the track. Um, I was a miler and I'm running on the track and it'd be so hot and humid and I'd be throwing up and the coach would say off the track to throw up and keep going. And so I really learned how to push through, how to push further um, than I thought that I could go. Um, I learned a lot about perseverance and through dancing and through, um, athletics. Um, but when I woke up from a coma, the first thing I learned was, you know, the doctor said, you've got a 1% chance of saving your leg from amputation. This is basically a war wound. There's nothing we can do for you. We're going to have to amputate. And all I chose to focus on in that moment was they said, I had a 1% chance and I said, Oh, okay. Well, so you're saying there, there's still a chance and we need to find a doctor who's willing to take that chance with me. And I think that resilient people choose very carefully what they put their focus on, you know, right before we got on, on this call, I was just telling my husband about my dad and I, I love my dad, but he's a good man, but he, he's the kind of person that the glass is always half empty. You know, he's very pessimistic. He's very negative. And I knew my whole life, I I was like, I am not going to be like that. I'm going to focus on the good. And I realized when I focused on the good, the good kept getting better. Like what we focus on, that becomes our beliefs, that becomes our actions, and that becomes our destiny. And so 
when I was in the hospital, I think what really helped me with my mindset and to get through every day, because it was not only painful, but to look down at myself and not know if, you know, today was going to be the day they were going to amputate my leg. And, but to also look down at my leg that was held together with metal rods and completely just, I I mean, if you could see pictures, I, I actually posted a picture on TikTok and they like took it down. They were like, it's too graphic <laughs> if that gives you any idea. But, um, I noticed I was spiraling down, like just getting depressed and yep. like thinking my mindset was like, oh my gosh, what if I don't make it out of the hospital? What if they take my leg? What if my husband doesn't love me? What if I can't chase after my kids? What if I can never wear a bikini again? Like those kind of things. And I was just spiraling down into this despair. And I thought, wait a minute, I've got a choice here. Yeah, I can focus on those things and the what if, or I can focus on the things that I do have and get grateful for that and those things and those people in my life. And so I started writing down the names of every nurse that came in and took care of me, the names of my doctors, all the friends, all my clients that came in and brought me food or flowers or just came to sit by me and pray beside me. And I noticed how that really, that gratitude was alchemy. And it's still something that I still practice. Even on days where it's really hard, I focus on the things that I'm grateful for because it turns what you can't do into what you can do and what you don't have into what you do have. And it really turned my denial into acceptance of where I was on my journey. So I could start to take action steps with grit in the right direction. So I practiced gratitude. I'm, I'm a faith filled woman. I, I believe in God is my higher power. And so I prayed, I had prayer warriors that were praying over me. Um, I had to believe in something bigger than me to get through that. And then I also did everything I could to move my body, which sounds kind of strange since I was completely bedridden. I mean, I went from being in the best shape of my life, um, being sponsored by Nike, being in health magazine, shape magazine, doing infomercials and fitness videos and, and to be in bedridden with bed sores and just completely emaciated. And so what I did was I told the doctors, I said, I need to have a pull-up bar installed over my bed. And they thought I was kind of crazy. I was like, no, I need to make sure my upper body stays strong so I can at least lift myself up to use that bed pan on my own. Then I had one of my friends that was a trainer bring me a couple of dumbbells. I'm pretty sure he stole them from the gym because they looked, yeah, I think he stole, but I was doing curls in between surgeries. I was doing my, you know, yeah. pull-ups my curls, not necessarily that I was like, Oh, I want to get, you know, nice arms. Or I just knew that moving my body, yeah. it moves your mood. It builds your confidence and it lets you focus on the things that you still can do and allows you to think I'm still moving in the right direction. So I think that prayer, gratitude practice, um, having meaningful connections and moving your body, those are like non-negotiables for me that still to this day, I really, you know, when I'm feeling down, I take contrary action and I reach out and I ask someone how I can be of service to them. When you focus on other people and when you get out of your own way and your own mind and your own head and you call somebody and you can be of service to others and their success, that's where fulfillment comes. No, you're absolutely right. You know, and it's, it's, it's really refreshing because, you know, I was, um, I was driving down the road. I was coming back from some kind of a networking meeting or something like that. And, um, I was thinking to myself, something had happened and I said, okay, this is a guide moment, you know, and, and I've got to the point where in my life, I see things that happen. I'll be thinking about them or I'd be wanting them. And all of a sudden it'll happen. And I say, okay, this is a God moment. You know, I call those God winks. Yeah, exactly. I love it. You know, because, you know, my accident down in Brazil, you know, I, I was one of seven that this bus had hit. This bus driver had hit over a six month period. I was only one who survived. 
everybody wow. else passed away over six months wow. that he was driving that bus before he was finally let go. And I was in the Brazilian trauma unit down there. And um, they, you know, they had, um, uh, I had physicians, you know, and stuff like that. But Brazil's healthcare system is not the best down there. You know, when you're on their healthcare system. That had to be scary. Yeah, it, it was because I didn't speak the language or anything like that. But the God things came in, whereas the guy who assisted me until the ambulance got there, he spoke English. He was Brazilian, but he spoke English. So oh, that wow. And then he rode with me to the hospital. And then I get into the hospital and there was two things I had to do. Um, I had um, a, a, a hematoma my head. That was one of the things. And um, there was a student plastic surgeon there and she spoke English and she wow. was a student, but she was a plastic surgeon. So she was able to repair the damage to my head. So you can't even tell it's there. Wow. So, you know, those to me are all God moments. You know, my, my um, uh, representative down there happens to be the sister of three doctors. And so she had them come in and see me and they told her, you need to get her out of here right now or she's not going to live. Mm. So they immediately within 12 hours got me into a private hospital. These are, to me, these are the signs in our lives when we start getting into those dark spots that we need to start looking and, and looking for those signs that, look, I'm still here. You know, I'm still alive. You know, even today, you know, it's, it start. the accident happened on the, in 2012, but even today, I still fight with issues from that accident, you know, but I'm still walking. Okay? It's a miracle. That is I'm a miracle. Wa I'm walking, you know, I've had four surgeries on this arm. I'm able to work. You'd you never know it. You know, that's amazing. So these are, you know, this is what, when I'm speaking with, you know, a lot of my customers and I would imagine from the stage, that's what you're telling them is, look, you know, it's not the end. You know, it's, it's not, um, how can I say it? You know, you've got to look at the positives. You've got to look at and draw from deep within, you know, where is that passion that needs to come out for you to keep going? Yeah, it's so much about so much about mindset and it is. and I I think for me probably my biggest teacher has been pain because as a result of my accident I was diagnosed about four and a half months after my accident I was uh, the pain just kept getting worse and worse but I was like I was taught as an athlete you just push through the pain and I went to go see a doctor. And he actually said, are you the kind of girl who likes to push through pain? And I said, well, yes, sir, I am. And he said, well, you need to stop. He examined me. He said, you've got something very serious. You've got something called complex regional pain syndrome as a result of this accident. It's unfortunately incurable. You need to go back and get in your wheelchair. And I said, well, for how long? And he said, forever. He goes, oh, there's there's no known cure. You're going to constant, you'll always be in pain. You'll never walk again and you'll never work again. And I was devastated at first. And I remember I, I cried all the way home and then I went straight to physical therapy. And when I got to therapy and by the way, I went to therapy so much that they actually gave me a key to the facility. I still have the key. I tried to give it back when I moved to Texas and he goes, no, 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 you keep that because you'll probably be back. So you keep that. Aww. But I went in and I said, you know, he goes, you don't have an appointment today. What are you doing here? And I said, I know, but I've just learned something. I was diagnosed with this disease and I'm going to have to work harder than I've ever worked before if I want to have the life that I've always imagined. And it has been hard. 34 surgeries. Oh. Yeah, that was tough, but living yeah. in constant pain every day yeah, and how it doesn't just affect you as a person. It affects 
the things that you're able to do and it affects your whole entire family. And it breaks my heart when I think back of all the moments that were stolen from me, the times I had with my daughters that I was so drugged up trying to get this, this treated. Um, you know, I tried ketamine infusions, Eastern Western medicine. I was on 73 homeopathic pills and 11 different prescriptions a day. Um, I was trying everything, spinal stimulator where they implant these metal leads into your back. I even went to some healer who was dripping oil and chanting over me and dripping oil on my forehead. I mean, mm -hmm. seriously, I was a good candidate for any snake oil salesman that was like, I, we'll get you out of pain. I'm like, okay. We had $2.9 million worth of medical expenses. Uh, we had a lien on our house. I was out of work and I really hit a rock bottom and I was in a place where I didn't want to live anymore. I thought I can't continue to live with this pain. And it was in that moment that I feel like I had just that little glimmer of light. I think we all have a light within us and it, I prayed, I got on my knees and I prayed and I was like, I need help. I thought about my daughters and I thought I can't leave them. Um, and I prayed and that gave me the courage to ask someone for help. Right. And I think that if you're struggling, reach out and ask for help. Right. Connection and community is life-saving. Right. And, you know, I, yes, I still live with constant chronic pain and People, you know, at the gym, my nickname is boots because I work out in boots because of this nerve disease. I can only wear a certain pair of shoes. My ankles fused. My calf is in the front of my leg. I did a muscle flap. Um, all the skin from the top of my leg is on the bottom of my leg. My toes are made from metal. Actually, my leg from the knee down is all metal all the way down to my toes. And so, you know, I used to be embarrassed of my scars, I used to be embarrassed that I couldn't wear tennis shoes and I have to wear boots. And I played in the celebrity uh, softball tournament last year. And my husband was like, what are you going to do? Like, you can't wear boots on the baseball field. Like, what, what are you going to do? And I'm like, I, those are the only shoes that I can wear. So I tried wearing some orthopedic tennis shoes and it flared the nerve disease up so bad. Like in the middle of the game, I went back to the locker room, got my boots. So I'm at the gym the other day and this guy comes up and he says, Hey, I just wanted to let you know that your nickname around here is boots. And so now I just embrace it. I'm like, you know what? We got to start where we are, do what yeah. we can't like use what you have and do what you can. Yeah, that's exactly it. You know, you know, it's when you start listening to those inner voices, all the time, the, those critical inner voices um, that you're not good enough, you know, and things like that. What you're doing is you're just opening yourself up to take in all the negativity that might be around you. Um, because, you know, it's, you know, that's one thing I've learned is, you know, like I said, you know, I said earlier is I've always believed I could do anything I put my mind to. OK, but there was always that inner voice that said, look, you're a fraud. OK, you're a fraud. You're not as good as as someone else as a strategist, which is where I am. You know, I'm a business strategist. And there was just one day, you know, I sat on a panel with other strategists, people that I, you know, um, looked up to. And one of them looked at me and said, Dana, we need to have let's go have some lunch. And I'm thinking, what the hell did I say now that was wrong? You know, that's, that's your inner voice saying, you know, what did I say? What, what was wrong? It's immediately where my mind went in. At lunch, he looks at me and he says, Dana says, you know, your poop. And I said, huh? He says, you know, as much as any of us do, as far as strategy, you just deliver it in a different way. And your target market is different and they need your delivery method. And I said, you know, that comes at, you know, that, that just, that, I, I love hearing that because I have such respect for you. And he says, no, he says, you are just as smart, just as capable, everything as any of us. 
It's just, I really think that sometimes we need people to believe in us to help us believe in ourselves. Yeah. And um, And my my husband, you know, when I had my accident, you know, the first, he was here in the U S and he wasn't down in Brazil. And the, my realtor called him and said, you need to get down here. Your, your wife's just been hit by a bus, Mm. you know? And he said for 72 hours trying to get down here, he said, he had no idea whether he was coming to a vegetable or what. In the meantime, I'm laying in the in the hospital bed. I'm begging the nurses. I said, please wash my hair. I don't want my husband to see me. Like oh. you know? And so they're having a blast laughing at what I'm saying, you know? So, you know, it's it's like, we've got to get rid of those. those we've got to ignore those inner voices that put us in these dark places. And so that's why I was so impressed with your story and what you've gone through. I didn't go through 34 surgeries. I'm sorry. I went through six on my arm. That's about it. (laughs) But it was one one is a lot to get through. I tell you, you know, it it was just, I would go through a surgery. Then I'd have a day of recovery. Then I'd have another surgery and a day of recovery. And then I was in and out of the hospital for like four years. Wow. Um, And so we, we lived at the hot. In fact, we just moved to Dallas from Los Angeles. All my doctors were at Cedars UCLA. We had the best medical care there. And so we didn't want to move away from my doctors. And I finally got to a place which I was like, okay, I think I'm finished with surgeries. You know, I think I'm finally done. And I think it gives me some freedom if we wanted to, to move, but but uh yeah i uh there was one time i had i actually broke the titanium in my leg wow and ugh, i i don't know how you do that i guess the doctor explained it as i was walking on a, a non union there was a non union by about 2 inches in in part of one of the bones in my leg and so i was basically walking on titanium and he said the titanium will only last as fast as your body can heal and your body, the non-union didn't heal fast enough. The titanium gave out and broke. Yeah. I thought maybe they'd put a cast on it. Oh no. It was a 12 hour surgery yeah. to take the broken pieces out. And then another, they couldn't close my leg back up. So they had to put a, a wound back on it and wait oh. two days and then go close my leg back up. And they kept me in the hospital for an extra two weeks at that time because my doctor knew that I wanted so badly to get back to working out and working with clients and going after my kids and, you know, chasing after them, walking on the beach. And so he was like, you absolutely cannot be out of the bed for two weeks. And so he kept me at the hospital longer just because he knew the kind of person I was and that I might just um, do, do something crazy. Damage. Do more yeah. damage <laughs> after he so, spent so much time fixing you up, you know. Well, yeah. the cool thing about it is I called pathology over and over and over. And I said, can I please have all those broken pieces of titanium they finally were like, okay, okay, we'll bring them down. They brought down a bag full of all this titanium. And I wanted to make like a bracelet for me and my daughters. And I took it to a jeweler as soon as I was out and recovered. And he said, uh, I can't work with titanium. It's the hardest, strongest metal. We can't bend it. And um, so instead I decided to make a wind chime. So I made a wind chime out of that titanium and I still hear it. Um, it's right outside my window of my office. And every time I hear it, it reminds me of just how powerful the human spirit is and how much, you know, the human, we can heal and, Mm -hmm. you know, and then we can help others. And so it's cool. That little wind chime, I look out there and go, man, I, I, when I feel down, I look at that and go, you know what? I come a long way. And sometimes I think it's important to focus on like, look at how far you've come. Yes. No, you're absolutely right. You know, we have to reflect like that. We have to see how far we've come in order to appreciate the work that went into it, you know, um, because 
you know, like I said, you know, I could have been 10 feet under. I could have been a vegetable when David got down to Brazil, you know, yeah. but yeah. all I kept worrying about was I want my hair washed because <laughs> it's, oh, I'm I know, sorry. I know. I'm I not- actually had to have, uh, the, the back of my hair because I was in a coma and then completely bedridden and not able yeah. to move at all for so long. Mm-hmm. And there, this is gross, but then there was also blood in the back of my hair that it basically turned into like a big dreadlock and I had to have my hair cut out. That, they couldn't. That's where, that's where mine was. I had all this blood caked and everything, you know, so yeah. And, and so I did not want my husband coming in and seeing me like that because he would have gotten an even worse impression. You know, as far as I was concerned, I'm on the other side of it. You know, I do. I think that's so important to it share is. because it is. even on days where like, I might be feeling a little down or something. If I just take a shower, wash my face yeah. and hair and put on some, a little bit of makeup. Yeah put on some nice clothes. I feel better only just, just doing that. Yeah. No, I, and you know, even with, um, I, I mean, I went through it myself after, after they did the work on my face and everything. Um, I wouldn't even look in a mirror for two weeks, two to three weeks. I was scared to death to look in a mirror. And when I finally did, I just broke down, Mm. but that's, that was it. Once I broke down, I realized, okay, I'm still here. You know, um, I could see it was starting to heal. It was still black and blue, you know, and, and all these stitches and everything. But, you know, it's, it's important for us to face, um, to face the darkness, but also realizing that, you know, it's only temporary, mm-hmm. you know, our, our, our faith, our, um, ability to that's where the passion comes in that's where the passion and the perseverance comes in you know you've been through it you know you know it could have been so much worse and then you look at somebody this is what drove me down in brazil okay in brazil they're 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 um medical side you know their medical whatever you want to call it medicare or whatever is terrible okay i was being wheeled into the um uh the emer- the trauma unit and I look up and I see all the air conditioning units and all the mold and mildew. And all I kept thinking to myself is, God, if I don't die from this accident, it's going to be from strep or, you know, step, what is it? Infection or whatever. Um, so, you know, that's all I kept thinking about, but you know, it's, it's, things are, like I said, things are put in our lives. Like you, you call them God winks. There's reasons for that, you know, Um, know, the fact that my representative had three brothers who were all physicians and they could come in and see me and tell them, here's what you need to do, because I couldn't speak the language. I didn't know what was going on. I was almost totally out of it. So, you know, and that's where you said rely on people to help you Mm -hmm. You reach out to others. Oh yeah. Community and connection is probably one of the most important things that you can have in order to be successful in order to be resilient is to have community and connections. Right. Right. No. And it's not just in tragic situations like this, but in business, in business, let's look at that, you know, uh, it, we we as small business lo- leaders or whatever we tend to think we can do it all you know we can start a business we can wear all the hats we can do this we can do that the next thing we know we're operating in a vacuum we have nobody out there that we can you know bounce things off um, oh boy let me tell you i, I know i i can't do it all i <laughs> i have a team I wouldn't have a podcast if I didn't have an amazing producer. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't have, you know, I've got an amazing graphic designer, amazing, um, an amazing web designer. I just hired an event planner for my next event coming up in April Yeah, because I I, I did always do my own events all by myself, planning all the back and forth with 
the vendors and the hotel and the speakers. And I was like, you know what? Time to hire an event planner. So I've got, uh, you know, between an amazing assistant as well. Right. There's, I couldn't do what I do without an amazing team. And I think it's really important to focus on your strengths and hire your weaknesses. And, you know, I, I definitely know my weaknesses. And when I first started, I was having to do, do it all pretty much. I didn't, I was like, I didn't even have an assistant when I first started and I, I had no idea what was going to come after I did my book and it released, it launched on the today show and my emails just like blew up. My Facebook blew up. I was like, it was because national TV, Yeah, I was not prepared for it at all. And it was just me like answering emails. And I remember my husband and daughter went with me to New York and I was doing like radio interview after radio interview after I did the Today Show and they went out and explored the city and he would literally kind of open the hotel door, throw in a sandwich to me and leave, you know, because it was just like doing all these different interviews and stuff. And, And so it took time to finally find the right team. But boy, when you have the right team and you have great communication between your team, that's when you can start to level up your business. Yeah. And, and, you know, a lot of small business owners think that they can't afford, you know, to hire a team. But my, my, my comment has always been to them. If you're trying to run your business, according to your bank account, you're never going to get ahead. You're never going to be able to scale. So if it's your job to get out there and bring the revenue in, get out there and bring the revenue in and let your team do all the, the, the little work that needs to be done on the backside. Uh-huh. Yeah. I always say, you know, God doesn't check your um, bank account or your budget for what your big dreams are. He checks your faith. Exactly. Oh, I love and, that. And it's, I love it's that. scary. Yeah. Yeah. It's scary, you know, like um my next event, each event that I've done has grown and gotten bigger and bigger and this event is it's scary when you're investing in, you know, a hotel space and a media crew and an AV team and you're right. flying in speakers first class. It can be scary and then you're checking off, okay, you've got this person you're paying and this person you're paying and this person you're paying and I remember when I first started, my husband was like, I was traveling all over the United States speaking at events. And a lot of them, I was speaking for free, just trying to like really get my reps in and create, get my resume built up and make connections. And my husband was like, man, when are you going to start making money at this? Like, this is ridiculous. When are you going to make money? Like you are just breaking even every year. So you're basically working for free. Like, you know, yeah. And I said, I'm not working for free. I was like, I have a plan. I am, please just trust me on this. I have a plan and I know it's going to pay off. And I never got into speaking for the money, but I had to switch my mindset to when I make more money, then I can help more people. When I make more money, I can pay my people more. Um, I can make a bigger impact. And so Now, when I get those checks in the mail from speaking events, I make sure to go over and show my husband and be like, look, here's it. And he's like, oh, what? they actually paid you that to just speak for an hour. I'm like, it's not just that hour. It's been a lifetime of experience and hours and hours and hours of putting together the keynote and then going and delivering it. So no, it's not just for that hour. (laughs) It's so funny. It's so funny because my husband... You know, when I started Market Academy, okay, my my goal, my number one mission was I was going to help first stage businesses because I saw them failing, bleeding money, mortgaging their homes, their their marriages were falling by the wayside because they couldn't handle the stress, okay. And what I learned very early on in you know the process was. The reason they were failing was not because of lack of leadership, not because of lack of funding, but it was lack of education. 
If they knew what they didn't know, they didn't know about running a successful business, they'd be able to manage everything else. Okay. So I was there to educate them and to teach them what they needed to know. Um, and he looked at me and he says, baby, small business owners, they don't have the money to afford to hire you. And I says, I understand that. But I says, that's where my heart is. I says, I understand that I've got to have a two part approach here. Okay. We've got one side that's going to work with these first stage businesses and in at a price point that they can afford. And then we have the higher end consulting and things like that, that will help pay for this. You know? And so, and, and it's taken, you know, it's taken a few years to do it, but now it's set up so that they feed each other. But there's, you know, it's like you said, you've got a plan, you've got a strategy on how you're going to do this. And that's where the passion and the purpose, there's a purpose for why you do what you do. And then there's the passion that drives it. And that passion is your why in business. That passion is what's going to get you through these hurdles, right? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, no, no. Well, I am so glad you came to join us, Amberly. We're coming up on, a, on the end of another podcast with Charged Up Studio here. And I thank you for you know, helping us, sharing your story with us and helping us understand um, what it takes to get through those, those hurdles that we're going to face, whether they be physical or mental or whatever, okay? Um, if our audience would like to get a hold of you, how can they get a hold of you? Well, I would love to offer your audience something I've created that it's a reminder for me to tap into my resilience when I'm feeling a little anxious or sad or right. doubting myself. And so um, it's a pacer playbook. Um, it's a methodology that I've come up with and they can download it for free. All you have to do is just text the word grit, G-R-I-T to 818-214-7378 and um, that's also me texting you back. So just, but just text the word grit to 818-214-7378. You'll get that free playbook. So you can take these and really apply it into your life. And then amberlylago.com is where you can find my podcast, my book, uh, my mastermind and my upcoming events and reach out to me as well. So yeah. Thank you so much for having me on. I feel like you're my soul sister. Like yeah. we've gone through so much, you know, so much that's so similar Yeah, and come out the other side and still, you know, Walk away. trying to do our best to keep, you know, moving forward. Cause it's not always easy, but having friends like you is what makes it more fun for sure. Well, I really appreciate you coming on Amberly. You know, and you're also on LinkedIn, I know. So it's Amberly Lago, Lago <laughs> on LinkedIn. So, all right. So that concludes Charged Up Studio for this week. Charged Up Studio is a product of Market Academy LLC and marketatomy.academy. Uh, if you would like to find out more information about our courses that we have for, for first stage businesses, Go to marketatomy, M A R K E T A T O M Y dot com or marketatomy dot academy, and you can get all the answers that you need. We'll be back again next week with another exciting episode of Charged Up Studio. In the meantime, go ahead and um, uh, sign up, uh, subscribe to us through our uh, website at chargedupstudio.live or go ahead and leave us a review on our Google Facebook page. Again, this is Dana Oliva with Market Academy LLC, your host with Charged Up Studio. And thank you once again, Amberly. Thank you. You've been listening to Charged Up Studio Live, the podcast with you, the small business owner in mind, with your host, Dana Olivo. 
Join us every Tuesday as we bring you valuable tips and insights into many of the topics you don't know you don't know about growing a successful business. Please leave us a review on any of the streaming platforms you are listening to or visit us on the YouTube or Facebook page and leave a review or subscribe so you don't miss another episode. You can also support us through Patreon by visiting our website, chargedupstudio.live and click on the Patreon link. Until next week, go out and have a charged up week.